The Hundred Year War, Joan of Arc's Legacy, by Aditi Maheshwari and Nishka Rajaboyna. Joan of Arc was born in the year 1412 in the town of domremy la pucella France. She was born into a Catholic family and wasn't even taught how to read or write, but learned about a religion from a very early age. She also had two brothers and one sister who were very faithful to the Roman Catholic Church. She was born near the end of the Hundred Year War during the time of the split between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. This was a huge conflict between France and England because France was mostly Catholic while England was mostly Eastern Orthodox. The Hundred Year War was started when a King of France and a King of England fought over the French throne. When King Charles IV died without an heir to the throne, King Edward III, the current King of England, believed that he should get the throne of France through his mother, who was a French princess. Count Philip VI believed that he had the right to the throne because by Salic law, women could not rule or transmit the right to rule to their sons meaning that King Edward III was considered invalid and Philip VI was technically the next heir in line. Generation through generation, the heir of France and England continued to vie for the throne of France. The rivalry grew throughout the war until Charles VII, the Dauphin of France. Another conflict between France and England was the claim over disputed French lands. England wanted more territory and the French believed that they had rightful ownership over the land. Examples of these regions were Paris and Orleans. In this part of the Hundred Year War, Joan turned 14 and heard what she believed to be God's voice in the garden of her childhood home. It was then that Joan believed she was supposed to take a part in the conflict between France and England. To take part in this conflict, Joan had to go through several difficulties. She had to send countless letters to numerous important people who quickly turned her down. To show that she had God's visions in her head, Joan said that she would be able to identify the Dauphin of France, hidden in a court full of dukes. Once she identified who the Dauphin was, he gave her the right to lead part of the French army, since he believed that she was destined to be the savior of France. Joan had to go through this undertaking because of another conflict happening in this time period stemming from religion. Many people who were Roman Catholic, which was most of the population of France, believed that women were inferior to men. Since Joan was a woman, there was prejudice against her, meaning that it was very hard for her to gain followers in her campaign, portray her beliefs, and persuade the royal court to let her lead the French side of the conflict. At this time of the Hundred Year War, England was winning against France by a great deal. They had taken over many French lands, including many important French cities. Joan's campaign started from the south and traveled up northeast, redeeming most of the taken cities. Joan sent many different letters to English commanders and generals asking for compromise. She believed that before she started her campaign, they should try to end things peacefully. The English refused to end terms and would not agree to the many compromises devised by Joan. Joan's most triumphant battle was in the city of Orleans. This victory had been named the Siege of Orleans. She surrounded the city unopposed at the Eastern Gate and gained access into the walls. 
The English later retreated from Orleans on May 8th. Joan's last stop was Paris, the most important sieged city. Paris was taken before by the English and their allies, the Burgundians. However, the Burgundians had not always been allies with the English. Before the Hundred Year War had begun, they had been allies with the French. The Burgundians often switched between being allies with the English and with the French. If there had been a major victory for the other country, the Burgundians would most likely switch to form an alliance with that country. During the Hundred Year War, Burgundy was allied with England, thinking that France would most likely lose. But when Joan of Arc started her campaign and began to change the war for the better in favor for France, Burgundy wanted to jump ship and make a compromise with France. This led to the Treaty of Arras. This treaty was between Charles VII, the King of France at the time, and Philip the Good, the Duke of Burgundy. It was devised while the Burgundians had still been allies with the English and as Joan was getting ready to launch an attack on the city of Paris. Joan was forced to hold back and set up camp near Paris. Her and her army didn't want to cancel the attack, but the treaty had been issued at the perfect time to stop them. It was found later on that the treaty had been a setup against France. The treaty was supposed to be a compromise between the Burgundians and France, but was really just a ploy to give the English time to restock their army and prepare Paris for an attack. The Burgundians were still allies with England and were used as spies on France. The Treaty of Arras had a major impact on the war, tipping the scale back to the English side. Because of this treaty, Joan and her army ended up getting captured. This was a result from the Burgundians striking the deal with France, which was a hoax. The compromise ended up causing even more conflict. Joan was now a prisoner of war, imprisoned by the English and the Burgundians. While the Hundred Year War was progressing, there was another conflict taking place at the heart of France. A civil war. The war started when the current king, Charles VI, disowned his son, Charles VII, technically making him an invalid heir. King Charles VI wanted the English to take the throne over his own son. France was split into two, some siding with Charles VII, who was the Dauphin, to become the true king, and some with Charles VI because they were trying to obey their current king. France and England have been rivals since the beginning of their country's time. They are still rivals to this day, but in more friendly forms such as soccer. The two countries have had conflict differing from religion to land. Even though Joan was born near the end of the Hundred Year War, she was a key character and made a huge difference. She tried to compromise with England, and when she failed, even the king tried to compromise with the Burgundians, but when both treaties fell through, France had no choice but to fully declare war on England and Burgundy, expending all of their army and efforts towards the Hundred Year War. In the end, Joan was captured outside of Paris because of the Treaty of Arras, and was burned at the stake, being considered a heretic to the Eastern Orthodox Church. Her legacy lived on and she was and still is considered one of the first women to break through the gender barrier as well as a huge inspiration to France. The conflict of the Hundred Year War was ended a few years after Joan's death. France had won, ending the age-old conflict and finally declaring the throne to the true heir, the Dauphin of France.